Hello, everybody. My name is Beckwith, Paul Beckwith, and I have precisely 20 minutes to do this video because that's the time when we're going to be having dinner in the Beckwith household. So 20 minutes, I thought, yeah, it should be great. So, so if actually I'm only halfway through and the video cuts out at 20 minutes, <laughs> I'll have to do a separate video. No, I think I'm, I'm good. I want to talk about the... Um, the Atlantic Ocean, the North Atlantic Ocean Current that goes off Norway. Um, so it's called the Norwegian Atlantic Current. It's actually losing less heat uh, to the atmosphere as, on its passageway up north. So it's bringing up more and more heat further and further north. So there, a new paper came out. It was just published uh, a couple days ago and uh, peer-reviewed paper which looks at exactly what is going on here. So I came across this from Jan Umsonst's work. Um, he posted it on Facebook, the details and the link, and then I went and carried, you know, invest, there's a blog which is excellent talking about it, and then there's actually a peer-reviewed paper on it, which is, which is um, why is today's topic. So first of all, you know, how is it connected to the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation? So this diagram shows it all. We've got the current coming up here. The Gulf Stream comes up across the ocean, bringing tremendous amounts of heat over to Europe and to the Arctic. And then it loops around this way here, and then it branches up. We've got the Norwegian Atlantic Current coming right up here. And then, of course, as the warm ocean water loses heat um, and it's very salty, then you know, combined with the out, uh, on the outskirts of the of the ice, um, when the ice is forming, it rejects salt. So the water gets not only does it cool down on its passage, but it gets very salty, sinks to the ocean floor, and completes the global overturning circulation pattern. So of course, the concern is that this thing has been slowing down, and if it shut off, it would have implications around the world. So. What's happening in this particular branch here is the volume flow rate um, maybe slightly reducing, but it's not. That's not what's happening here in the last uh, few decades. Uh, well, well, what the paper is all about is that the water is because of stratification of the ocean, etc. The, the 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 volume flow rate is think of a cross sectional area moving at a certain speed. So you've got an area in square meters times the speed meters per second, you get meters cubed per second, which the unit is the sphere drop is 10 to the six, a million cubic meters per second. And I think it's about five sphere drop or so, but what's happening is that water is being channeled into a smaller cross-sectional area. And it's actually, therefore, to get the same volume flow rate or close to it, you have to speed up. And because that water's moving faster, there's less time for the heat to dissipate to the atmosphere. Um, you know, one, one idea of where the heat's going is maybe vortices, lateral vortices, but that's not the case. The other thing is that the air over the ocean there is warming at much faster rates than the water, right? Water has a huge heat capacity. So therefore the temperature great because the temperature gradient between the ocean and the atmosphere is um, smaller, well, well, there's already more heat in the atmosphere. So less heat is gonna go up to the atmosphere from the ocean. So more heat is staying in the ocean current. That's the other main factor. Um, and I can talk about the heat capacity of air, water versus air. And you can see the numbers here, um, the heat capacity Density of water, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Um, the specific heat, 4.18. Um, kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin or joules per gram per Kelvin. Um, and uh, so you can compare these two numbers. And for, for air, the density, of course, is much lower, 1.293 kilograms per cubic meter. Um, specific heat is one. So, so the prop, these properties are vital for, for the way the climate system operates. And uh, so that's a very important factor. I just wanted to show some of these things first. So let's go back to the actual 
article here. Um, so this is a blog, Ocean to Climate, uh, by Sang Ki Lee, um, which is what uh, Yan uh, linked to. So a highway of heat to the Arctic, why a vital ocean current is losing its chill. And it's all explained here. So this is the Norwegian current. Off, this is Norway here, uh, UK here. Um, so they so current flows and properties of the of the are measured in these different locations, and, and then it branches into the Barents Sea opening, and the and then it loops up through past northern uh, past northern Norway here. Um, and what you see is there's a reduced, there is a significant trend of reduced cooling of this current. So more and more heat is going further north. In fact, it's 0 0.11 to 0 0.13 degrees Celsius per decade increase in the water temperature because the heat's not being lost to the atmosphere. And uh, so basically the core of the Atlantic water shows significantly, statistically significant warming at all four measurement sections over 30 years. Um, so why is the northern branch of this Norwegian Atlantic current, why is it losing less heat, carrying more heat further north? Well, they looked at three possibilities. The first possibility was that less heat's escaping to the atmosphere. And what they found is that there's been a 3% decline in heat loss per decade, and that's gone on for three decades. So with less heat loss from the ocean current uh, because of a warmer atmosphere, um, then more heat is being carried further north. So the net heat flux from the ocean to the atmosphere is reduced by 3.26 watts per square meter per decade. That's 3% decline. And that's driven by the rapidly warming air. Air temperatures are rising faster than sea surface temperatures. So that reduces the temperature gradient between the surface of the water and the air. So that means that less heat is going from the water into the air. The second culprit uh, which is very important, is that the water is moving faster. In fact, the travel time of the water to move up here has been cut by more than half. So from Gimsey, which is this location here, to the Brent Sea opening, it used to take 9 to 12 months um, in the early 2000s for the water to move up there, and now it only takes 3 to 6 months. So the water is moving much, much faster. The only way, you know, and the volume flow rate is, is uh, hasn't, you know, it's, 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 if, the, if the currents are slowing down, it's reduced, but um, there's no way it explains this effect. So there has to be a reduction of the cross-sectional area of the current, right? If you reduce the area by a factor of two, you have to increase the speed by a factor of two to have the same volume flow rate. So this is very important. The current structure is more uniform with depth. That's linked to a reduction in vertical shear. It allows faster advection. So advection is horizontal movement. So we're getting accelerated fl flow. So the flow is going faster. It's not, there's not as much time for the heat to go into the air. Now they also looked at uh, another possible suspect and that is you know, branches uh, vortexing off, carrying heat but there's no evidence for changes in lateral heat loss from eddies. So this would be, you know, for example, you know, heat coming out here, eddies taking away a lot of the heat. Well, they say that's not happening. It's not a driver of what the observed trend is. So that's basically what's going on here. Um, so the research, uh, so there's a, the paper is called Reduced Cooling in the Norwegian Atlantic Slope Current. Investigating Mechanisms of Change from 30 Years of Observations. It was just published uh, recently. Um, and this research analyzes 30 years of ocean data to investigate why the Atlantic water in the Norwegian Atlantic slope current is cooling less as it travels towards the Arctic. So this is very bad for the Arctic, of course, is because it's carrying a lot more heat up into the Arctic. They used observations from 1993 to 2022 so basically uh, 30, 30 years of data. And, uh, you know, they got this uh, trend uh, where the current is retaining its heat. 
Um, the, the rate of uh, retention is, is uh, well, it was 0.11 or so uh, degrees Celsius per decade. This, this is a, this round. So they looked at three possible causes, the atmospheric heat exchange, lateral eddy activity, and the speed of the ocean current. So the eddy driven heat showed no significant change. So reduced air sea heat fluxes and faster advection speeds are the primary drivers. Um, they talk about a shift to a more barotrophic current the, to, and, and uh, basically uh, I can talk about that. Um, I think I've got something on that too. Um, barotrophic is, uh, th this is the paper. Yeah, barotrophic. So we've got fluids like air or water. Density, if density only depends on pressure, it's barotrophic. If it depends on temperature and salinity, it's baroclinic, a couple physics terms on how fluid moves. Okay, and this is a good explanation. I'll give these links, but you know, what are baroclinic and barotrophic waves? Okay, uh, so it talks a little bit about the physics of them, but basically um, for barotrophic, fluid density depends only on pressure. Um, it depends on pressure and temperature and they have a diagram here so there's just a pressure change here um so you don't get any vorticity or rotation if you have a pressure change here and a temperature change this way then then you get uh, a, a a rotation effect you can get eddies and things so so that's just some of the physics of it and uh yeah so we'll go back to here okay so of course the you know we this is a the North Atlantic hosts one of Earth's great climate engines. A massive current of warm water is a thermostat for Northern Europe. So it's a critical highway, the Norwegian Atlantic Current, a critical component of the AMOC, carries immense volumes of heat from the subtropics to the poles, in this case to the, to the Arctic. And it keeps high latitudes, for example, in the Norwegian countries habitable and also milder temperatures in the UK, etc. But there's another equally vital function. As it travels north through the Nordic seas, it release, releases its heat to the colder atmosphere. It transforms the, water, transforms the water itself. The cooling of the water makes the water denser, allowing it to eventually sink and begin its return journey south to the deep ocean, the overturning part. So for the planetary engine to run smoothly, the cooling must be efficient of this current. And that cooling is being reduced significantly, like I said, from, the, from is what this paper, the finding of the, the main finding of the paper is. So therefore that branch of water can extend further into the Arctic, continuing to warm. And I guess if it keeps narrowing and keeps narrowing, eventually vanishes. Um, you know, something has to break. So, so basically, and they say here, you know, it's faster than 0.1. It's 0.11 to 0.13 degrees Celsius per decade. The reduction in the cooling of that Norwegian Atlantic current may sound small, but it's a monumental shift in the heat budget of the planet. It's like a persistent fever in a vital artery of the global circulatory system. We can also often think of the ocean current system as like the blood coursing through your veins, right? So if then something happens with that, um, you know, it's a problem. And they, in, the, in, the, in the study, they called it a northward amplification of Atlantic water, AW warming. Okay, and then they talked about the reasons for why it's happening um, and the implications. But let's go, let's go to the paper now because I'm, uh, I got to stick with my 20 minutes, like I said, or I'll be in trouble. Okay, so this is a paper. Um, that was just published, okay, uh, it was just published January 5th, 2026, there you go, uh, accepted November 27th, and then, and then there's usually at least three reviewers, and then they might ask changes to be done, so it was accepted by the journal, um, Ocean Science, and then published uh, just a couple days ago. So the Norwegian Atlantic Current NWAC, it's a principal conduit for poleward heat and salt transport within the AMOC. Plays a key role of water mass transformation in the Nordic seas. Its variability exerts a critical influence on high latitude climate, Arctic ocean inflows from the rivers, etc., and deep water formation in the Nordic seas. 
So they looked at, it's a 30 year study, four different cross sections. Um, they measured temperature, salinity, et cetera, with depths, also the velocities of the current. And uh, they found this significant reduction of the uh, rate that that water is cooling. So more and more hot water is getting further north. And they looked at three possibilities, decreased air, sea heat fluxes, right? Which is due to the heating air, air heating quicker than the water because of the greatly lower heat capacity of air. Uh, reduced lateral heat loss due to decreasing eddy activity. They found that wasn't a factor, uh, but they looked at it. Uh, there was increased advection speed, so horizontal speed of the key current. Okay, so they looked at these things to see what was going on. So they talk about, uh, and I'm just going to look at some of the some of the results here. So this is the this is the uh, current right here. Coming up, uh, this is uh, Norway over here, Scandinavian countries. And the current splits into two sections here, as I showed you in the schematic. And they measured, they took data, cross-sectional data here, 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 and here. And they looked at the results. This is the basically the temperature profile. So, so what this means is this is BI here. Um, you can go across here, and that shows the distance in kilometers um, across here and this is the profile of the water so you know we get that shallower water on this side and it gets deeper and deeper and you can see the different temperatures and you can see salinities and you can see the velocity of the current and you can look at how over time um, this is uh, showing and, and well these are different locations but basically so this is BI here um, this is BSO here, profiles, and then GI here, and uh, SI here. And you can see, you know, as, so, so this profile across here, you can see very uh, fast here, fast velocity going right down to the ocean floor here. And then here, this, this guy here is very fast velocity closer to the coast. Okay, so they looked at data and they looked at the timing, how long it took the water to move. And, uh, and uh, basically, you know, there's some interesting um, diagrams showing different, um, different profiles and in the core and non-core sections. And you can see, you know, they looked at the heat fluxes and they looked at the temporal variation, how long it took the water to move to find out that the, uh, the, 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 um, the, the speed of the, of the uh, current uh, was increasing greatly increasing, reducing the transit time of the water. So basically, and then they, they uh, looked at the trends over time in graphs and so on. And uh, yeah, so they found out uh, that this current is significantly changing, right? The heat flux uh, to the atmosphere is significantly reducing um, and the, the, the length of time for the transit is significantly um, reducing because of the speeding up of the, of the water flow. Okay, so this is, um, this is a really important and interesting study because, uh, you know, we'll go back to, to this guy here because this is a big, this is an important branch of the AMOC, as I showed here. You know, it's this whole branch here that we're talking about. So a significant change here. You know, we know the whole AMOC is changing. So it's it's interesting to see how the different components are, are changing. Okay, so um, anyway, very, very interesting study. Um, and I think my time is about up. So please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and donating to PayPal to support my research and videos. And I also have a uh, GoFundMe here um, to, for if some people prefer that. And uh, then, you know, you can find me. I'm all over social media. So please, uh, you know, find and share and share these videos. So, so thanks for listening. And uh, bye for now. I think I made it to my uh, 20 minutes. Okay, bye for now.